Welcome back, gang. It's Delty from DeltyIsGaming.com, and I finally got a chance to build the Necro Tank PVE build, Gravedigger, also my favorite monster truck. And in this video, I'm going to tell you what I'm using, why, gear, skills, champion points, and more with specific loadouts for beginner, intermediate, and advanced. Let's get to it. So first thing up is, should you play this build? And simply put, the Necromancer PvE tank build has amazing self-heal survivability and one of the hardest hitting ultimates in the game, Colossus, which we're gonna touch on a lot. Necromancers are kind of a fun, unique play style. They're using corpses and you're constantly using corpses to resource sustain, to heal yourself, and it's kind of a really fun gameplay loop. This build is actually set up and can do some of the harder content as this footage is hard mode veteran dungeons, but it's actually quite simple and doesn't require a complex loadout and constant bar swaps to be just as good. So we're going to emphasize less bar swaps, less complex rotation, simply holding block, allowing you to heal yourself, sustain yourself, and you can use this build in three DPS, one tank loadouts if you want to do the trifecta runs. The pros of the Necro are simply put, resource sustain is very easy with the active and passive skills along with using the corpses. It has incredible self and or group healing as well. One of the only sources of major vulnerability in the game and why commonly you see end game PVE loadouts wanting Necros. The more Colossus, more vulnerability you can get, the better. And the cons are limited use of pole chains, making certain fights difficult on stamina sustain and it's not as good resource sustain as a drag but overall, it's a really fun playstyle. Simply put, the Necro has something that no one else does. That's major vulnerability, and it has a lot of resource sustain, good group utility, and you can strive independently of a healer. This is a great place to start, and this is what I came up with. We're going to start with the skills first, and the reason we're going to start with the skills, it kind of feeds into why we're using specific gear sets. So I want to explain this so it makes clear why we went with the loadout we did for the year. So our first bar up, we're going to use a common loadout, Sword and Shield on our front bar, and then Ice Staff on our back bar. The first ability up is kind of a flex bot, and that's Silver Leash coming from the Fighter's Guild. It pulled mobs to you, so it allows you to clear out trash mobs, though the major downside of it, it costs a lot of stamina. So consider this a flex bot in a truly single target fight, but in the vast majority of the game, you probably need to pull. Second ability up is Pierced Armor. This is a single target taunt, and it has a massive armor reduction. Think armor around 18,000 armor is what mobs have. So the more you can reduce this and get it closer to zero or zero if possible, the better it's going to be. This gives major and minor frac. You're primarily going to use this on the thing you want to die the fastest. A boss, a really hard hitting mob, whatever you want to get off the battlefield first, use this. Third ability up is necrotic potence. So what this does, it's going to give you healing and ultimate generation. So what we're trying to do is build up as much ultimate generation as fast as possible, allowing us to use use our combo on our back bar, providing the most damage possible to our group. Also, Necrotic Potence is going to give you a lot of healing as well, and slotting has some benefits. It's one of the best all-around skills, and we're going to put on our front bar where we're primarily going to be because we're going to take damage on this bar. Next ability up in the four key is Hungry Scythe, and what this does is a very useful AoE damage and healing spammable. So typically, Magic DPS is going to use this, but even as a tank, you're going to use this when a lot of mobs are around or you need a little bit of healing. It does an upfront heal and a really good heal over time that pairs with well with everything else we have and if you don't know this already you can block cast this so when i'm playing my tank and using this skill when i need to heal i don't drop block to cast this i'll just hold my block key down and then fire off this ability multiple times if needed and your goal as a tank is to drop block maybe when you need to do a fully charged heavy attack to get back stamina and typically when i do that is when i see a fully charged heavy attack from a boss hit me and i block it and i survive then i know i have about a five second window that's reliably probably not going to happen again that allows me to fully charge heavy attack. Otherwise, I'm not dropping my block typically. Mortal Coil up, and this is our flex spot. So you can go with whatever you want here. Mortal Coil is what I primarily use because it's a great resource to aim. It gives me some healing and gives a little bit of off healing. So this is what I'm gonna use my corpses for. Also slotting, it gives us an advantage as well, but you might wanna flex in something like Heroic Slash. This is gonna reduce damage and it's also gonna generate ultimate. So as you become more familiar with this build, as you become more survivable and have better resources, 
more sustain through knowing your passives and when to heavy attack, swap that out for Heroic Slash. That way you can reduce some damage and generate more ultimate. Next ability up is Renewing Animation. This is incredible. Basically, it allows you to res three people and kind of what I've used to save teams from wiping the group. And you can use it PvE or PvP, but it's up to three people and the AoE radius you have to plant it down on the ground is massive. So typically in fights that I'm unfamiliar with or we're struggling with, we're dying, I'm making a mistake and losing taunt, which happens, I'm going to save this ultimate and not go with the damage producing one. Very rarely in Elder Scrolls Online is there actually damage check, like that of Shram Hollows, the very last fight. You have to do a certain amount of damage in a certain amount of time. But in general, ESO is not like that. If it takes you 15, 20 minutes to clear a mob fight, you can do it. That's why solo players a lot of times can do these extraordinary feats because there is no damage mechanic that makes you urgently have to get things done. So that's why I use this on my front bar is to that end when I'm doing unexperienced, inexperienced things, and I'm struggling and we're dying, I'm losing taunt, I'm not managing my resources effectively. I got this as an oh crap button. Note, the cost is massive. So you're going to have to save this up and use your corpses to get up 300 over ultimate to be able to use this thing. Back bar is I staff for heals buffs and debuffs and primarily what you use the ice staff for is our number four ability and we're going to start there that's elemental blockade this gives an aoe shield it immobilizes and has a chance to proc brittle status effect and also the chill status effect so the frost staff will allow you to eat damage just like a sword and shield reducing the damage done and it's kind of a weird goofy play style but you will get used to it and it's a lot better because elemental blockade as i close the distance is what i cast control it's great buffs and debuffs buffs it's also going to unproc our infused crusher enchant on our back bar when we flip adding a lot of damage to you and your group considering this your number one priority back bar skill to cast balance is our first ability up and it's an interesting ability essentially gives you an infinite magic sustain loop along with an armor buff that lasts a quite a long time so what it's going to do is you're going to cast it and you're going to exchange health for magicka that's useful because on our back bar we're using magicka for blocking so that's the resource that's going to be taken while we're eating uh, attacks and blocking is magic so basically if we're not we have enough health or we have enough healing coming in we can just sit here and hit balance over and over and block infinitely. The front bar has stamina for blocking. So this is why we can go to our front bar, use stamina when we're low on magic. We'll go to our back bar and use magic when we're low on stamina to fill up those pools. And then you can always have kind of the infinite sustain loop using this skill along with others, assuming you have enough healing. It's also going to proc a gear set that we're going to use Crimson Oath. That's going to allow us to do a lot of AoE armor reduction. Again, 18,000. We're trying to get that to zero if we can and a rage is the next ability up it's a range taunt 28 meters you can swap for frost clinch from the destruction staff skill line but it lacks range in all situations and i don't find it very user friendly and the third ability up is spirit mender one of the strongest in the game the reason is it gives you 10 percent damage reduction along with other passives that give you resource sustain and others another reason spirit mender is so good is that 10 percent damage reduction stacks on top of minor protection and major protection you can get minor protection for something like temporal guard from the Sagic Order skill line, and you can get major protection for something like Revealing Flare. So if you really wanted to set this build up a little bit more simpler, you could. For increased damage reduction, along with maintaining this, that's a lot of damage reduction, not even using champion points and not even using anything else like gear. And the fifth ability up is kind of a flex spot as well. You can go with something more group utility. I like Echoing Vigor, and usually I go with Powerful Assault on some of my builds, and you can. This is what will proc that Powerful Assault 5-piece gear set if you go with that. It's a good strong heal over time and actually heals a lot of my allies within a big range and it helps me bail them out if we lose a heal or someone goes down. I'm playing with a DPS that only has a shield and doesn't have any self healing. So I primarily use this at the start of the fight or heal myself if I'm out of magicka and I have no way else to heal. I'll come back here and front bar, got my four key for magic for healing. Back bar, I got Echoing Vigor, and I can use Stamina for healing. So you can see how we're playing off both resource pools for self-survival and resource sustain. Next ability up is Colossus and the absolute best ultimate in the game for a tank. Paired with our gear, absolutely melt health bars. You're going to want to save up 500 ultimate if possible using the Sack Seals Champion loadout. It's going to give you major force for a very long time, and it's also going to give you major vulnerability unique 
to the Necro, making it one of the best in the game. It also has a massive AoE, so you're typically trying to time this for a DPS mechanic that's heavy or you're an oh crap moment where you just need to kill the boss and so on. So you'll kind of pair this with or without a Warhorn that your healer is running for really good high burst. And so how you would play this build, the simple rotation for it is you can pre-buff with a couple of abilities. So typically you're going to use balance. That's going to give your armor ability. Once you close the distance and you're in combat, you can use balance again to proc Crimson Oath if you're using that set. Back bar, you're going to maintain Spirit Guardian as you close the distance. Typically what I do is light attack to improc that Infuse Crusher intent. I close the distance and use Elemental Blockade to get that rolling. And then I do a couple different things. I can use Echoing Vigor if I'm using Powerful Assault. I can drop an ultimate, but typically I bar swap. Once I get to my front bar, then I kind of have some priorities. If we're doing a boss fight, I use Pierced Armor to reduce those armor more. Assuming that balance was up and I fired it off, got Crimson Oath, they're going to be at almost nothing for armor. Then I Silver Leash range targets. I park typically all the targets on top of a range because the range won't move. The melee will come to me and I start using inner rage for range taunts on my back bar if there's a lot of mobs spread out or I use pierced armor in a close distance. As things start dying, I prioritize mortal coil if I need stamina sustain or necrotic potence if I need a lot of ultimate regeneration and healing. And then I rely on hungry scythe for spammable if I just need a burst heal using the magic. So I'm going back between my back bar which has primarily primarily magic and one stamina skill and I go to my front bar which is primarily stamina with one magic skill for healing. So you kind of have to learn how to go from stamina bar to magic bar and you're constantly looking at your ultimate, your potion, and your resource pools. So this build loadout is quite friendly because you can rely on both uh, resource pools. You run out of stamina, I know, boom, I go to my frost bar, I can block with that and not run out of gas. Okay, I'm running low on magic. If I have enough health, I can boom, hit balance, pop up on magic, keep blocking, or I can bar swap and go to my sword and shield. Now let's talk about the gear. So we have three different loadouts and I kind of do a hodgepodge of them, but this is what I'd recommend for beginners. Grace of Gloom five piece set. This is obtained Overland Somerset DLC or sold on the track. It's just gonna make you very tanky and it's going to give you major evasion reducing aoe damage which is quite nice it's going to give you some healing for a brief period it doesn't have 100 percent uptime but keeping this on your body will make you very survivable as you're learning how to tank some of the harder encounters ebony armory is up next this is from crypt of hearts one or two you can do it non-normal or a veteran it's going to increase max health by a thousand for you and 11 group members it used to be an old school trial staple set the reason it's still useful is, yes, it increases your health, but it does something else for the group. And tanks, you really want to focus on providing utility, um, damage sets, whatever you can to optimize the group's overall effectiveness. And this is a really easy one to get straight out the gate. And the last thing up is endurance. This is obtaining an Imperial City in the Dungeon Finder. The two piece will be active and on the weapons, and it's going to give you max health. So a very, very forgiving, a lot of max health and your, your healing is going to scale off of Grace of Gloom based off your max health. So the more you have, the better your healing is going to be just for holding block and not dying. And that's what I would move on towards is obtaining a Monster Helm. One that I would go out straight away is Sentinel of Razakum. This is a very easy one to get a hold of in Dark Shade Cavern 1. It's a veteran dungeon and you can get the shoulder from the vendor. It's actually quite easy to get and has great resource sustain for you and the group. It's going to proc a pool. You stand in it, you get a bunch of resources back in health. And that's your number one priority to work on getting this monster helm, along with another five piece set that's going to offer a little bit more utility to your group. Another five piece set that I would go after is Crimson Oath, like I've talked about. This is from Dread Cellar Dungeon Waking Flames DLC. Casting an ability, drinking a potion, or using a poison that applies a major or minor buff to yourself or an ally sends out a wave of energy, reducing armor of nearby enemies within 12 meters for 3,541 for 15 seconds. And it has a 12 second cooldown, so essentially you can maintain 100% uptime. And we're gonna proc this by using balance. This is an absolutely fantastic set for AOE trash clearing mobs and dungeons. Another one you can go with is Drake's Rush. When you bash a target, you're gonna generate a lot of ultimate. So this feeds into the 500 ultimate Colossus, obtaining it as fast as possible. Drake's Rush can be found in Black Drake Villa, and I highly recommend using one of the two and playing around with what suits you the best. When I'm playing with dungeons, typically I do three DPS and no healer, just me as a tank. So that extra uh, reduction in armor goes a long way for increasing our damage. The other gear set five piece we're going to use on our back bar is found in Imperial City Sewers, Vendor, or Sold on Traders. And what it's going to do while you're casting an ability from the Assault skill line, it's going to give you a lot of weapon damage and spell damage. So we're going to proc this by 
by using echoing vigor and trying to maintain 100% uptime on that. It's a bit difficult to do and it's a bit expensive to get, but you don't have to do any trials to get this set. You can also flex in Torx Pack to take an advantage of the Crusher Enchant. That's a craftable set that's going to optimize that infusion Crusher Enchant and add more DPS to your group if you can't afford or get powerful assault, but I'd work on those. And that frees up a sword and shield on a front bar using an arena weapon. And the one I go with is the Perfected Puncturing Remedy. This is from Dragonstar Arena and Craghorn. It's going to give you healing taken on your front bar. And when you deal damage with puncture, you're going to heal for a lot and get physical and spell resistance equal to the amount of healing. It's going to give you a ton of resistances and it's going to just make your healing so much easier. Another set that I experimented with is the Void Bash from Vatashram Hollow. This, you can swap out one of the skills on your front bar and use like a Reverb Bash to get the effect and it just basically pulls everyone in within 12 meters. The downside of this, I found the 12 meter range of it not that useful because typically range mobs were 25, 20 meters away. So I found this not optimal and would prefer the healing going with the silver leash. Working on the end game setup. And so what you're going to do with the end game setup, this is kind of ideal for folks doing trials or 12 player content, really looking at the big picture. How can we optimize our group? There's a couple of different monster helms you can use here. So in Kratos Behemoth, this is found in Black Drake Villa. And what it's going to do is flame attacks, proc, increase flame damage, and decrease flame damage for the entire team. If you're going to use that set, you'll have to have some type of fire damage. Typically, you can do this by an enchant on your front bar, proccing the Syncratus Behemoth effect or a skill. Another monster helm you can go with is Magma Incarnate. This is obtained in Veteran Dread Cellar Dungeon, and what it's going to do when you heal yourself or a group member with a single target heal, grant the lowest health group member within 28 meters, minor courage and minor resolve. It's going to increase weapon and spell damage and armor for 10 seconds, and the energy is going to bounce around group members along, as long as you're in within 8 meters up to 3 times. So essentially what you can do is optimize your team's damage with minor courage and minor resolve. And this is pretty much what I use in dungeons. Then the main five piece we're going to keep on our bar is Perfected Claw of Yolacrins obtained in Veteran Sunspire, or you can do the normal for a lesser version. And what it's going to do is when you taunt an enemy, you're going to give you and 11 group members minor courage for 15 seconds. Increase weapon and spell damage by 215. This can occur every eight seconds. And the premise here is you give minor courage as a tank and someone else gives major courage, typically your healer. So there's a couple of different options, but this is a go-to if you don't know what the other tank's running, I would make sure this is maintained 100% of the time. Then back bar, perfected Saxiel's champion. And this is the heavy hitter obtained in veteran rock grow trial, Blackwood chapter. When you're on your back bar, you're gonna use an ultimate. You and 11 group members within 20 meters gain major force for one second per 15 ultimate spent, increasing your crit damage done by 20%. What this does is allows you to use major vulnerability in your back bar save up to 500 ultimate drop a colossus not to mention you're gonna get major vulnerability for 12 seconds the pairing of those two gear sets and those two debuffs is just fantastic you'll absolutely drop the house if you save up to 500 ultimate and why you kind of set up your bar to generate ultimate and i still stick with the perfected puncturing remedy on my front bar obtained in dragon star arena and Cragworm, and that's just for the healing and the extra resistances that gives you now let's get to the miscellaneouses. And if I were to take this all over again, the footage I'm actually showing you is on a Dark Elf. The race that I would use is probably an Imperial. Overall, it has the best stat pool and the reduction red diamond passive makes it a go-to because it applies to your block, your sprinting, your dodging, magic, health, whatever skills it applies to reducing that cost. Nord is also another really good one if you're going for the ultimate generation route because it gives you that while taking damage. Mundus Stone, since a lot of our uh, gear sets and healing scale off of max health, I go with the Lord, increasing max health by over 2,000. Champion points, I go with a lot of damage reduction. So in the Warfare Tree, I go with Duelist Rebuff, Ironclad, Unassailable, and Enduring Resolve. Fitness Tree, I go with Bracing Anchor, Boundless Vitality, Expert Evasion, and Fortification. Craft, I go with the Steed blessing rationer liquid efficiency and treasure hunter for consumables i use the bee witch sugar skulls giving you the most max stats possible health stamina and magicka a note on that you want your max stamina pool to be a little bit higher than your max magic reason being is when you use a synergy like orbs or uh, spear shards you want to get back max stamina and if your stamina is lower it's going to give you back max magicka for potions, I use tripods, health, magic, and stamina. Very simple and pretty much what all the other tanks do. 
So this is the Necro build. It works fantastic in dungeons, trials. You can optimize it. You can change up your skills and your build a little bit for whatever context you're doing, especially if you have dedicated healers and you're playing more of a dedicated role in trials, or you can set it up much simpler and slot abilities on your bar to reduce damage and just make it so much easier not having a bar swap. So with the major vulnerability the way it is, the Necro remains one of the top tier classes in the Elder Scrolls line. In PvE tanking, I was skeptical about it after getting on here and learning how the resource sustain loop works learning how the buffs and the debuffs work it's hard getting off so now i have both a tank and a healer as a necro and i absolutely love them click that like and subscribe if you like this type of content and i appreciate you watching